Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video I want to take a look at the game between Michael Adams and Fabiano Carana played in the first round of the London Chess Classic. Michael Adams, the British number one, 43 years old, rated 2745, while Fabiano Carana is the Italian number one and the world number two, 22 years old and rated 2829. Let's go straight into the game. Adams opens with a move 1e4 as he tends to do. He earned the right to open that game, by the way, in the Blitz tournament, which he won. And winning that Blitz tournament gave you an extra white game or finishing in the top tier in that Blitz tournament, while Caruana has to deal with an extra black game, which is a factor since there's only five rounds total in this London Chess Classic. e4, Caruana plays e5, his main weapon, knight f3 and knight c6. And we see bishop b5, the Rui Lopez from Mickey Adams, which at this level is pretty much automatic after e4, e5. Good news for us chess fans is that Karana chooses the move a6 here and not the Berlin knight f6, which we've seen many, many times recently. a6 keeps some more pieces on the board. Bishop to a4 and knight f6 castles bishop to e7. Here, d3 has been all the rage recently. It's a move that I've definitely struggled against. I'm happy on chess 24. Peter Svidler recorded a series on this move explaining it. It is trendy and Adams also complained about this move causing some problems, but he chooses the classical move rook e1 himself, which is answered by b5, bishop b3 and the move castles. The main move in this position together with the move d6 and castle is very close to my heart because it is my favorite line or at least it hints at my favorite line after c3 the martial attack d5. Which not only Fabiano Carana is a specialist of, Michael Adams' his opponent is also a huge specialist, has played this move d5 with the black pieces many many times and he chooses not to deal with it with white but instead plays the move d3 which is not one of the most popular moves in this position. It is popular without rook e1, but the combination of the two we don't see very often and is considered to be quite harmless. Black plays d6, d5 not such a good idea against d3, d6 the natural move, threatening knight to a5, now picking up the bishop, so white has to go c3, creating a nice little loof for this bishop here. Knight to a5, bishop c2 and c5. This considered the principal antidote against this line. Black grabs some space in the center by knight a5 c5 and is now ready to arrange his pieces by going knight to c6 back and rook e8, bishop f8, h6, bishop e6, all of which we will see in the game. Knight d2, very standard knight maneuver from the white side. This knight is going to f1, knight c6, knight f1 and h6, always useful preparing bishop e6 in order not to be annoyed by knight to g5 and also stopping bishop g5 for all times, which is useful as well. Knight to e3, interesting decision. More often than not, this knight goes to g3 in these positions to keep this bishop open. But knight e3 also has its pros. The knight controls the d5 square, amongst other things. Rook to e8, bishop e6 looks like a perfectly good move here as well. A rook e8 is always part of the plan, preparing bishop f8, as mentioned. Here a4, I'm not sure, I don't like the move a4 that much, I gotta tell you. The reason is that white normally wants to play on the king side or in the center with d4 in such, such positions. And if you want to play on the king side, typical maneuvers are h3, knight h2, queen f3, knight g4, try to make something happen here. But then why open another front on the queen side where black will generate counterplay? I'm not quite sure what the thought process behind this is because we can be fairly certain that Caron is not going to miss the threat a takes b5. And he doesn't, he goes bishop e6, pairing that threat. And at the same time keeping an eye on this diagonal where the square on b3 has been a little weakened. h3, bishop f8, knight h2, standard maneuvers, also this knight h2, the knight wasn't doing all that much on f3. And b4, Karana starts working on counterplay on the queen side. I like this move b4. Adams has a very fine 
positional radar and he of course immediately spots the one drawback b4 has it weakened the light squares on the queen side so the bishop returns and starts fighting for those light squares like that move too rook to b8 by no means forced here d5 for example grabbing space in the center was a very valid option but rook to b8 hinting at b takes c3 decent move as well here bishop c4 is a move which was criticized by Michael Adams directly after the game saying that in the tactics that ensue he did not judge correctly that black had that many resources it becomes concrete maybe instead of bishop c4 he should just have gone bishop e6 when after rook takes e6 let's say c4 keeps the position closed and more or less equal maybe f takes e6 is possible too but also here why there's nothing to fear so bishop c4 spiced up the game b takes c b takes c and Karana shows what a strong calculator tactician he is he goes d5 gives up the a6 pawn for very concrete play bishop takes a6 and queen to a5 that was the idea attacking the bishop on a6 and the pawn on c3 and Adam said around here he realized that the tactics weren't really working in his favor. Bishop b5 is answered by rook takes b5 and a takes b5, queen takes a1, b takes c6, queen takes c3. Only black can be better here. Maybe it's still what white should have done, but it did not satisfy the British super grandmaster. e takes d5, another option, but after knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Black is still in very good shape because once again bishop b5 can be answered with rook takes b5. So instead Adams came up with a very creative move c4 saving this pawn leaving this bishop on priest planning to win the piece back with a fork on d5. And this does happen however the problem for white is that after all these operations he is a pawn up at the moment but he's left with a lot of weak pawns on d3 on d5 his pieces don't coordinate that well black is at least slightly better here already rook a3 covers this pawn but not this pawn knight takes d5 knight g4 looks a bit desperate but white has to try to make something happen on the queen on the king side now, some knight takes h6 might be in the air you could maybe dream of some ideas with d4 followed by rook takes g3 queen could go to f3 it's all a bit of a long shot but there's something white has to do and knight g4 is as good a try as any also of course attacking the pawn on e5 which has defended now with f6 knight f1 once again we see adam's talent for grasping small changes in the position very quickly f6 defended this pawn but it slightly slightly weakened the light squares around the black king and knight f1 aims to exploit that and immediately starts its journey towards these squares rook bd8 very logical laying siege on the d3 pawn you could argue that rook ed8 might have been more accurate it's a very tough call which rook is always one of the more difficult questions there are you could argue for both rook has a drop on e8 rook had a drop on b8 as well so rook bd8 i think is fine knight to g3 and here is where karana decides to open the position even further but it is a mistake that lets adams back in the game in some way and changes the character of the position he plays c4 which is very natural activating his pieces to the max and after d takes c4 it's not so clear if there's immediate knight jumps but even queen takes c4 black's pieces would be overwhelmingly active and this would be very good for black so why is c4 not a good move because white has the option to sacrifice his knight here get some pawns and gain the momentum in the game back knight takes h6 adams seizing his chance it's one of his big strengths in my opinion that even if the game hasn't been going well he does have nerves of steel he adjusts very very well to any new situation and he seizes his chances really a very cool customer this is michael adams guy g takes h6 queen g4 check king to h8 and d takes c4 and we can see that picture has changed a bit 
White only has two pawns for the piece, but the black king is very vulnerable. The white pieces all make a lot of sense all of a sudden, have some nice squares, and black has to defend, which is always more difficult than to attack. Not always, but it is here. He goes knight to e7, which is very logical, covering some squares. But you could argue that he should have gone knight to f4, returned another pawn, but exchanged some material. When bishop f4 is kind of forced, e takes f, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, queen takes f4. And I'm not sure who's better and why. White is three pawns for the piece at the moment. The black king is still a little weak, but the material is reduced now and after a move like rook c8. Black will probably get the c pawn, and I think he's in all right shape here at the very least. Maybe that would have been an easier solution. Instead of the knight e7, queen to h5, good move. This knight was forced to defend very passively, knight g8. Knight f5, it turns out that white all of a sudden has a very serious initiative here. <clears throat> it's very easy to play, bring the piece into the game, h6 is under attack, black's in trouble. Queen to b7, planning to defend with the queen via h7, but it puts another piece on a very passive square. Rook g3, queen to h7. And this is the first moment where Adams missed a chance to win the game. Actually, the move he should have played is very logical in itself. It's rook e4 with the Following the Goro rule, invite everybody to the party, you're the attacker, your rook on e1 is not doing anything, put it on g4 and crush the opponent. As usual, it depends on tactical details. What Adams missed is that after knight to e7, he has the cute little shot, knight to d6. Defending his rook on e4, trapping his rook on e8, and after rook takes d6, queen takes e8, planning rook takes, queen takes f8. White is winning. Queen e4, queen f8, king h7, queen g7 is checkmate. So rook e4 left black pretty much defenseless. Just rook g4, nothing white can, white can do wrong really. Knight d3 is another line, rook g4, knight takes c1, just rook takes g8, queen g8, rook g8, king g8, queen g6, king h8, knight takes h6. This line is very long admittedly, but it is very forced as well. So I don't think there is much to miss here. Queen h6, king g8, queen takes c1, and white should win this. Rook e4, missed chance. Instead, Adams played the move knight h4, and now after knight to e7, covering the lethal threat of knight g6, black is very much back in the game. Bishop a3, activates this bishop, knight b to c6. King to h2. It's very hard to answer the question who's better and why here both sides were in serious time trouble. I believe it's easier to play with white. He only has two pawns for his piece, but his army is just a lot more active, while black has to be very careful not to allow any tactics, and his pieces are pretty passive. Bishop g7 is logical, puts his bishop on Yet another passive square though. Bishop takes e7, Adams decides he has no more use for the bishop and would rather exchange it for an enemy knight. Knight takes e7, rook d1, cute little move. Exploiting that rook takes d1 is not very good because of queen takes e8 check. Set queen g8 was played, might be a good move, but once again looks very, very passive to put this queen mm, so close to his king on the back rank, to her king. Rook b1, now that the queen has vacated this diagonal, Adams tries to activate that guy. Not gonna happen, rook to b8, rook to d1 back. He wouldn't mind a move repetition. Karana wants to continue the fight, plays rook e d8. When this rook has no, no more good squares to go and has to allow the exchange. c5, mobilizing his last reserves these two passed pawns. Rook takes d1, queen takes d1. The position is still complicated because black is so passive. And this is where Karana makes a mistake that is out of character because it's, I believe, a calculation mistake and he calculates so well. 
plays a move rook to b4, which looks very active and nice, attacks the knight on h4, trying to chase it away. But white has a very strong reply, the move queen to d7. And it turns out that the exchange of this knight against this knight actually favors white, because his passed pawn on c5 or c6 soon becomes extremely strong and extremely hard to deal with once the knight from e7 disappears. So instead of rook b4, he should have played the move queen to c8, covering the d7 square, keeping an eye on the c5 pawn, and leaving everything to play for after queen d6, rook b7. It's the good old question, who's better and why? It's very hard to answer after a move like a5. At the very least, black is fine. Didn't happen, rook b4, mistake, queen d7, strong move, rook takes h4, queen takes e7, and I believe in this position is where Karana missed something from afar. I would think that he planned the move queen to f8 here, which looks very natural. Queen takes f8, bishop f8, now is good for black, who can easily deal with these passed pawns. But queen f8 allows a very pretty refutation, which you could easily miss when calculating this line. Rook takes g7 is winning for white, believe it or not. After queen takes g7, queen g7, king g7, white is a rook down, and it looks like his pawns aren't going anywhere because this rook would swing over next move. Not after g4 though, keeping this rook trapped, and white is winning. h5 runs into king g3, and the rook is being picked up next move, while king g6 is too slow. c6, h5, c7 with a new queen. Not a tactic you see every, every day going into an ending and then going g4, really trapping this rook on the h4 square. And I believe that's what Karana missed from far away. Instead, rook d4, and now after c6, white's pawns become very, very strong. Although c6 was not even the best move, he should have gone a5 with probably a winning advantage after queen f8, queen b7, because both these guys are running and very, very hard to stop. C6, queen f8, queen b7, rook b4, queen d7 back, rook d4, queen b7, rook b4. And here Adams shows he doesn't want to repeat moves, but plays a very nice move, the move rook to c3. Saying, take my queen, I don't mind, after c takes b, I will follow up with rook c8 and b8 queen and win. So, of course, that does not happen. Karana intends to finally activate his bishop, which has been sleeping for a long time, with a move f5. But he's not quite in time anymore. The white c-pawn is just a major force here. Queen d7, threatening c7. Rook d4, queen e6, once again, threatening c7. Rook d6. And here, yet another nice petite combinaison with queen takes d6. Looks fairly obvious at first, after queen takes d6, c7, white is getting a new queen. It's not that simple, because you also have to anticipate the move e4, check. Which at the same time frees the bishop to pick up the rook, but it turns out that after the simple g3, bishop takes c3, c8, queen, king to h7, queen takes c3, white gets a queen ending with a pawn up. And not only is this a very annoying passed pawn, there's also some additional weaknesses in black's camp. These pawns, they're not all that easy to all defend, especially f5 could turn out to be a weakness. So Adams decides to exchange it with f4. Sorry, not Adams, Karana decides to exchange it with f4. But that creates a new weakness on e4. And I believe this is a fairly straightforward technical win for Michael Adams, who was never short on technique, short off technique. Sorry, short made me think of not Nigel Short, and Michael Adams was never Nigel Short, just to clarify that as well. Anyway, after Queen G3, I believe White is winning. Queen D2, Karana does put up a fight, but Adams finds some very nice chess chess sequence, check sequence. It is way past midnight, I'm not making sense anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be done soon, Adam's gonna win this game. King h8, this is a very nice check sequence I mentioned.
because after queen a8 check here, <clears throat> king h7 runs into queen takes e4 with check, while king g7 was played in the game, but it also runs into queen takes e4. The cute point is that queen takes f2 check, which was the black counter play, it doesn't work now because queen g2 is a counter check. And white wins the exchange of queens forced, and this pawn is gonna win the day. So instead, Karana played the move king f6, but now he's two pawns down, and the rest is really a matter of technique. Always a good idea to keep your queen centralized in such situations. Shows good, good technique, it just controls a lot of squares. Black doesn't even have a check, and now the pawn advances. There is not much Karana can hope for. Oh, he does have a check, I didn't see that one. It's a sad check, the one after king h2. There is no more checks, queen f7, and Adams once again used the same trick he used earlier, queen e4 check, king g7. Now you can't take on f2 because it runs into queen g2 check. So he has a move to play the move a6, pushing this pawn even further. And Karana had seen enough and resigned in this position after 73 moves. Michael Adams draws first blood at the London Chess Classic is the sole winner in round number one and grabs the lead by beating the world number two. Very impressive feat. Not a perfect game by any means, but in the end I believe Adams did win. Well, not convincingly, but was the just winner because Karana just made more mistakes in the end and throughout the game. And Adams did punish him he did seize the third chance he got. I'm not quite sure where the second chance was after rook e4. But of course we will take David Smurden's word for it. And one final look onto the chess 24 side to see the standings after round one. Not very exciting since Adam's the only one who won his game. They are using this three point system, which I've never been a big fan of, but it doesn't really change the standings all that much. So. Doesn't really matter either way. Adams first, then we have all the guys who drew their games. Kramnik, Nakamura, Giri, Anand, and Karana in the sole last place because he's the only one who lost. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'm sorry for my rambling. It really is late and I hope the players play like 25 moves tomorrow. Then we can make the comments a bit earlier. Thanks for watching and see you for the next round. Bye everybody.